Renting a car in Santorini is a must do if you can afford it. But there's a number of things you should know before you go and drive there. And that's what this video is about. Hey guys, welcome to Greece Explained. My name is Sebastian. I'm a tour guide in Athens and you can find all the information regarding my tours on my Instagram page. All right, so this video is divided into six parts. What do Santorini roads look like? How to get to some cool spots that you can only reach by car? Avoiding traffic jams, parking, gas stations, and finally some old overall tips regarding renting a car in Santorini. That's where I'll also be mentioning the driver's license topic. All right, so Santorini's road network is pretty straightforward. It's basically one road going from the northern tip, so Ia, to the southern tip, the lighthouse of Akrotiri. And that road passes through Imerovigli, Firostefani, Fira, Pyrgos, and Megalochori. And then from Fira, you have another road that goes towards the airport and Kamari. And from Megalochori, you have one going to Vlihava, Perivolos, and Perisa. This is what I would call the main road network of Sensorini. And this is what these roads look like. Decent pavement, but often pretty narrow. If you're used to nice and wide lanes, you're gonna feel a little claustrophobic in Sensorini. The speed limit is usually around 40 kilometers per hour, but let me tell you right away, all locals will be driving faster than that. There are no speed traps. I mean, there's hardly any police in Sensorini anyway. So yeah, don't be surprised if someone overtakes you at double the speed limit. Oh, and no one respects stop signs in Greece either. Everyone just rolls through. That's also something you should keep in mind. Now let's go back to the map for a second. And let's zoom in on the road from Fira to Ia. This is what we call the old road, while that one is the new road. Why am I telling you all of this? for two reasons. One, during the tourist season, so from mid-March to mid-November, this last section of the old road becomes one way in this direction, which means that leaving Ia has got to be through the new road and never the old road. And the second reason why I'm mentioning this new road is that since it's built on the flat side of Sensorini, the road is much wider and straighter. The old road looks like this, a very narrow, winding cliffside road. Now, some people love it because the view is breathtaking, but I've had a few people who told me they had gotten very anxious because the drop-off was so scary. So yeah, if you know you're gonna have a bad time based on the images I just show you, definitely only use the new road to go between Fira and Nia. That one goes both ways all year round. Now, I showed you the three main roads of Sensorini, but of course there are many other roads, and those are usually the ones tourists complain about, full of potholes, sometimes even no pavement at all. And yeah, it's true, I agree, they're not great. But then again, these tourists probably didn't need to use these roads in the first place, so I guess Google Maps told them to go that way, which leads us to an important point. Sure, you can use Google as a GPS, but keep an eye on the road signs. If you're headed to, let's say, Perisa, and Google tells you to turn left, but the road sign says that Perisa is straight ahead, you follow the sign. Google is probably just trying to make you save 10 seconds by going on some super narrow alley full of potholes. So yeah, you can use Google. I was doing it all the time when I had to pick up people from specific hotels I didn't know how to reach, but don't lose track of what the road signs are saying. All right, there are five awesome spots in Santorini you can only reach by car. Buses don't go there. So if you are renting a car, I can only imagine you will go to at least a few of them. So let me briefly tell you what you need to know. Let's start with the lighthouse of Akrotiri. This one is very straightforward. It's at the end of the main road of Santorini, and there's a large parking area 100 meters away from the lighthouse. Super easy. Next, the monastery of Profitis Elias. The road starts from Pyrgos town and the pavement is pretty good but it's very narrow considering it's a two-way street so don't be surprised if you have to put two wheels off the road when crossing another car. Also it's kind of a mountain road with many hairpin turns which shouldn't surprise you since the monastery is located at the top of the tallest mountain of Santorini. This right here is a parking area. You didn't stop here or if you want you can go even higher and park just in front of the entrance of the monastery but it's not guaranteed you'll find a parking spot there. Next we have the heart of Santorini which is this beautiful caldera viewpoint. For this one you're gonna drive by Megalochori which is once again on the main road of Santorini and then over here you make a right turn, you drive for a few seconds on this unpaved path and bam there you go you've arrived. I'm not leaving any GPS coordinates for those three I just mentioned because you can very easily find all these places on Google Maps and Google's GPS will know exactly how to get you there. Next we have Kolubos Beach which is my favorite beach on the island. It can get a little 
wavy because it's facing north where the strong winds are coming from in the summer. So try to go there on a non-windy day. The beach is located along the new road between Fira and Nia. You'll have to park here and then hike for five minutes. I will leave the GPS coordinates for this one down below because the parking spot is not on Google Maps. And finally, we have Ancient Thera, an archaeological site at the top of Sansorini's second highest mountain, offering beautiful views at both the villages of Camari and Perisa. Now, I want to be very clear. The road to get up there is by far the scariest and probably the most dangerous because it's very narrow and there's no guardrail. Also, ancient Thera is not the most interesting thing to see in Sansarini, in my opinion. So I'm not sure you should do it. So why am I even mentioning it then? Well, because there's something else on that road which blew my mind when I discovered it. And that's Zodoros Pigi, or the Spring of Life in English. These are travertines, which are basically limestone deposits that have been piling up for thousands or hundreds of thousands of years carried by natural springs coming from the mountain. No one knows about this place. It's a huge hidden gem. Now, in order to find the Zolo you need to park here at the fifth hairpin turn coming down from the mountaintop. And from there, you're gonna walk this trail for five minutes. It's pretty straightforward. There's only one trail, so you can't go wrong. And after five minutes, you're gonna reach this tiny church. And next to the church, you'll see this cave. Enter it and bam, welcome to another universe. This place is pure magic, I love it. All right, let's talk about traffic jams now. Are there any? Well, no, not really, except for two places that can get a bit tricky at times. One, leaving Ia just after sunset, because as you know, everyone goes to Ia for the sunset, and many of those people will have come by car. And as soon as the sun has set, everyone starts walking back to their car, and it can get very chaotic on the road. In order to avoid this, very simple. Stay a bit longer in Ia after the sun has set. Ia is beautiful at night. Plus, it's all empty because everyone has left. And the second spot you need to be careful with is the crossing between the main road of Sansarini and the road coming up from the ferry port. There's usually no traffic there at all, but between three and 4, 4.30 p.m., it's madness. Why? Well, because around 3, 3.15, the Blue Star ferry arrives in Sansarini coming from Athens, bringing an average 2,000 people at once and all these people need to go up that one road at the same time. Some with car rentals, some with taxis, some on buses, but there is only one way up. And if you're just minding your own business, driving along the main road of Sansarini and you just happen to be driving by the crossing between 3 and 4 p.m., you are so screwed. All right, let's talk about parking now. You can park in the street in Sansarini, it's always free. If you go to lesser known villages like Vurvulos, Glijada, Eborio, or even Camari or Perisa, you'll have plenty of space to park in the street, super easy. But if you're driving to the more touristy places like Fira, Ia, Imerovili, or even Pyrgos, that's where it gets trickier because the majority of it will be pedestrian. In Ia, for instance, this is the area with road access and all of this is 100% pedestrian. You cannot enter with a car. So what happens in that case? Well, you'll have to park in parking lots located on the outskirts of every village, usually 10, 15 minutes away on foot from the old town. Of course, I'm gonna be leaving all the GPS coordinates of these parkings down below. Google Maps sometimes references these public parkings properly, but sometimes not. Regarding Ia, I need to give you a bit more than just the GPS coordinates, because things get very messy there. There are two free parking lots in Ia, the parking near the bus station, and then the unpaved parking over there. But you are never gonna find a spot in any of those two. They're always full. So you have three options. One, there's a paid parking right here, which looks like this. It's pretty big and I've never seen it full. Price is around 15 euros total for the first five hours. Your second option is the parking of the desalination plant located here at the very start of Ia. There's always free spots there, but you will have to walk for like 20 minutes, maybe even more, to reach the old town. But it's a gorgeous walk, so if you like walking, go for it. And then your third option regarding parking in Ia is not to use your car at all to go to Ia. That's what I used to do when I lived there. I would park in Fira and then take the bus to Ia. That way I wouldn't have to deal with Ia's parking chaos and the traffic jams after sunset. So there you go, your three options are one, paid parking, two, free parking 20 minutes away, or three, 
bus. Now, what about wineries and restaurants? Do they have their own parking lots? Well, if they're located inside a village, then no, of course, because it's all pedestrian. In that case, you have to park in one of the parking lots I just told you. But all wineries and restaurants located outside of these old towns, yes, they always have some sort of parking area, so super easy. But please only use those parkings if you're an actual customer. It's pretty disrespectful to just park there and then go do something else instead. Now, what about parking fines? Can you get a ticket if you park in an illegal spot? Well, no. Except in Ia. I've seen many cars getting a ticket over there. And it usually ranges from 50 to 100 euros. Elsewhere, it seems like police don't really care. All right, two more things regarding parking. One, there are many scenic viewpoints along the road where you can pull over. So if while you're driving you see something nice, don't just stop in the middle of the road like so many tourists do. Keep driving and very soon you will see a small parking area where you can stop. And second thing, don't leave valuables in the car. We used to not have any problems with car break-ins, but we started having a few cases last year. So yeah, even though Santorini remains a very safe island overall, be careful. All right, what about gas stations now? Because yeah, you will have to visit one at some point because all car rentals will ask you to bring back the car at the same fuel level as you took it. There are quite a few gas stations on the island, but not in Ia, that's something important to remember. The nearest to Ia is over here on the lower side of Imerovigli. What about fuel prices? Well, it can vary a lot, but let's say it's around 2 euros per liter for diesel and 2.50 for fuel. Now, this might sound like a lot, but don't forget you're driving very short distances in Santorini and these smaller cars don't consume much at all. So just to give you an idea, in order to do the whole loop of Santorini, it's going to be around 30 euros of fuel. So I think that's okay. Now, once you pull over at a gas station, no worries, you don't have to do it yourself. The employees there will do it for you. That's a common thing all over Greece. And that way you're sure you won't put the wrong fuel in the car, which would be really bad. And you're gonna have to tell them how much money you want them to put. So you have to roughly estimate how much gas you need to come back to the original fuel level. Now, as a very rough estimate, a full tank is worth around 60, 80 euros, because these small cars have small tanks as well. So based on that and looking at the fuel gauge, it should give you an idea how much you need to ask for. And by the way, they all speak English, so don't worry, you won't have to say all of this in Greek. All right, let me give you a few overall tips regarding renting a car in Santorini now. First, your driver's license. Will it be accepted in Greece? Well, if your driver's license has been issued by one of these countries, you're good. If not, then you'll need to get an international driver's license. Now, these six countries were only recently added to the list and not all car rentals know about it so it is possible they will ask for an international driver's license anyway that's why i'm going to leave you down below the link to the official website of the greek state mentioning all the countries i just showed you you can show them this if they don't believe you now what type of car should you rent well small because you've seen how narrow santorini streets are plus it helps with parking but don't underestimate the size of your luggage i've seen so many people at the airport eventually having to get a cab on top of the rental car because they couldn't all fit in the car with their luggage. So when booking your car, always have a look at how many bags can fit in the trunk. Of course, if you're only two people, you can always use the back seats as well. But if you're four or five people, that's when it can quickly get out of hand. Something else to keep in mind is that these smaller cars are often less powerful. And that means it's better to switch off the AC when driving uphill, especially with automatic cars where you have no control over the gears. If you leave the AC on and your car can't handle the slope, it might just stop in the middle of the road, which you want to avoid. Now, the type of cars I do not recommend are one, convertibles, because Santorini's sun is going to beat you down, and two, electric cars, because there are hardly any charging stations on the island. And one more pro tip, always record a video of the car with your phone when you're signing the papers. Sure, a guy from the rental company will write down all the pre-existing damages, but he can always miss something unintentionally. So recording your video is the best way to prevent any surprises later on. And car rentals usually encourage you to do so, just so that there's no misunderstanding. Now, what are the best car rentals in Santorini? And should you get full coverage for your car? Well, that's what I'm answering in this video. Super important, could save you a lot of money. And there you go, that's it for today. Hope you liked it. See you in the next one. Bye.